And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, for the promise is to you and to your children and to all who are far off, as many as the Lord our God, our God will call. And with many other words, he testified and exhorted them, saying, Be saved from this perverse generation. Then those who gladly received his word were baptized. And that day about 3,000 souls were added to them. If you're not aware, that this was a description of the day of Pentecost. The birthday of the modern church as we know it. The birth of Christianity. It says after the people received the word, after they received the message and accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, they were what? They were baptized. Today, that is what we're going to be talking about. This act of faith and obedience. Today's message is titled, Baptism, an Act of Faith and Obedience. Now, I, I tried to find some interesting facts about baptism, because it just seemed like the cool thing to, to, to do. So the only thing I could really come up with was, let me see, it says, the only thing I come up with, it takes on average of 90 gallons of water to baptize somebody, and only about nine drops of rain to keep them home from church. <laughs> Since that's the best I can come up with, we, we better stick with Scripture. Before Jesus ascended to heaven, he left the disciples with these instructions. Matthew 28, 19. It says, Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Today, that is what we are going to be doing. Today, we are celebrating a new disciple being brought into the kingdom of God. Today, we are celebrating answered prayers and new beginnings. Today, we are celebrating a new creation in Jesus Christ. Jesus said, make disciples. Share the gospel with them. Pray for them. Teach them with your words. Teach them with your actions. This is what making a disciple is all about. Some people, this takes a lifetime. Some people, this only takes a few years. Some people, this is, is immediately... But Jesus says, go out and spread the gospel, which means good news. The day when somebody has accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, that is the day they become a disciple of Jesus Christ. That is the day they become a follower of Jesus Christ. As we say, they become a Christian. After this, then Jesus says what? Baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Today, this is what we're celebrating, a baptism of a new follower of Jesus. But first, I want to answer a few questions. So what, what happens when we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior? What happens when we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. Galatians 2.20 says, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. In the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. My old self has been crucified with Christ and it's no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. My old self has been put to death and I have become a new creation by trusting Jesus, by putting my faith in Jesus. The day we accepted Jesus Christ into our life, 
We, be, we, we begin to live a, a life of faith in Jesus Christ. We became a new creation. Now the thing about water is, what? It can both destroy and it can also bring life. Both of these actions take place during a baptism. The old self is put to death. And then you come out a new creation. A new life has been born. I would like to read a post I saw on Instagram this week. If you will bear with me. It says, I know someone out there needs to see this. If you would just take a moment out of your day to read this, it would be greatly appreciated. God loves you. He really does. On, on August 27th, 2020, I found him, and in just these few days, it has radically changed my life. If you know me, you know I don't like to use Instagram that much. However, I just I felt led to share this message of mine on this app. Read Matthew 9, 13. It was a verse that my dad used in his message this past Sunday that really stuck with me. It reads, but go and learn what this means. I desire mercy and not sacrifice. For I did not come to call the righteous but sinners to repentance. What does this mean to me? It is similar to how a doctor only treats the sick, the well do not need him. Jesus comes for the broken, the weary, the sinner, essentially every human, as we all are sinners. He loves you and wants to have a relationship with you. He hears your struggles. He understands them. All he wants is for you to have a relationship with him and his father. Trust me when I say I was pretty much the opposite of a Christian in the past. I despise Christianity. Profusely believed in science and science only. And thought the whole Bible was just fairy tales. Even though I put up the facade of believing... I truly did not. I never took my relationship with the Lord seriously. I had tried and given up many times before. Anyways, enough about me. This is about you, the one behind the screen. Jesus knows what you're going through. He supports and loves you. And His Father is a loving God. All he wants is a relationship with you. All you need to do is believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved, you and your household. Acts 16.31 I have made this message somewhat long, not a bad thing, but I'm truly speaking this from the heart. Finally, to whoever's reading, I love you, Jesus loves you, God loves you, all they want from you is faith and trust. This was written August 29, 22 by Lauren Speaks. You be the judge. Does this sound like a letter from a person that has become a new creation in Jesus Christ? So now the next question is, what do we get when we accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior. Colossians 1, 13 through 14 says, He has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of the Son of His love, in whom we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sin. For we have been rescued from the kingdom of darkness, we have been delivered from the darkness we once lived in. The constant searching for that key to fill that hole in our heart. We have been lifted out of that pit of despair and hopelessness. 
We have been delivered from the lives of the enemy. He tells you, tells you he says, you're no good. You're too far gone. You're, you're just too broken and there's no hope for you. We have been delivered from the feelings of uselessness. All this has been replaced with, with what? With peace and joy. Something that we all want. Believers and non-believers want peace and joy in their life. Jesus offers us peace that surpasses all understanding. We just have to receive it. God has transformed us into the kingdom of His dear Son. The day we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior is the day we became a Christian. The day we became a new creation in Christ. Paul tells us the wages of sin, that is the price of sin, is death. But what? We have been redeemed by Jesus who purchased our freedom, paid our sin debt in full, and forgave our sins. Jesus loved us so much that even, even, think about this, even when we spit in His face, even when we despised Him, even when we laughed at the mere thought of what He had to offer us, He still gave His life for us so that we could be redeemed and delivered from the depths of darkness. The day we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior We're given a clean slate, a clean record, a new beginning, a fresh start. When you have been lifted out of that pit of darkness, that pit that is just full of sadness and despair, you'll be able to finally experience true true joy and happiness. You will finally find what you have been searching for all of your life. So what what is exactly this act of baptism? And how does God feel about it? Let's look at Jesus' baptism. Scripture tells us, Then Jesus came from Galilee to John, John the Baptist, at the Jordan, to be baptized by him. John tried to prevent him, saying, I need to be baptized by you. And you are coming to me. But Jesus answered and said to him, Permit it to be so now. For thus it is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he allowed him. Jesus is acting out of obedience here. He's acting out of obedience to fulfill all righteousness. This is what we are commanded to do. So what happens next? Matthew 3.16 said, When he had been baptized, Jesus came up immediately from the water, and behold, the heavens were opened to him. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting upon him. When we, were, when we are baptized, we're immersed into the water. Like we said earlier, when we do this, we put to death our old self. We put to death our old thoughts and our old feelings, right? We put to death our old self and we come out what? A new creation. The gates of heaven are opened up to us. The Spirit of God, for us, this is the Holy Spirit, is alighting upon Him. The Spirit is alighting upon us. It means to come upon somebody. We have taken the final step into entering into the world of being a Christian. The heavens have been opened to us. We are empowered by the Holy Spirit. When you come out of that water, you are a new creation through Jesus Christ. You are telling the world, I am a Christian You're telling the world, I am a faithful follower of Jesus Christ. So our next question was, so how how did God view this? How did God view Jesus being baptized? How does He view us 
being baptized. Look at verse 17. And suddenly a voice came from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. God is well pleased in the obedience of Jesus. Just like God is well pleased in us when we accept His Son as our Lord and Savior. As Lauren said in her letter she posted, God wants nothing more than have that one-on-one relationship with us. This is made possible through His Son, Jesus Christ. When we become one of Jesus, one of Jesus' lambs, that is one of his followers, one of his children. Think about this. Jesus is seated beside God Almighty interceding on our behalf. That is, if you don't understand what that means, that is, he is praying for us. Think about that. The Savior of the world is up there right now interceding for everybody in here. He's interceding on our behalf behalf. He is up there right now forgiving our sins. Hey, Father, don't worry about that. He's one of mine. Hey, Lord, don't forget, hey, you know, God, Dad, forget about this. I, he, he's one of mine. I've forgiven his sins. Think about that. Think about that. Before, before the new covenant with Jesus... I forgot the exact number, but there was 630-something laws, mosaic laws that, that we were told to follow, that the Jewish people, the Israelites, this is what you have to follow. This is God's laws to follow. It was impossible. The Jewish leaders, they were always trying to what? Trick Jesus. They're always trying to get one up on them, and they failed every time. They said, teacher, what what is the most important law out of all the laws? What is the most important law? Jesus said, there is two. Love God more than anything else in your life and love your neighbor as yourself. But God, love God more than anything else. Put Him before anything. That means putting God first and trying our best to be obedient to Him. So my last question is, what else do we receive besides being a new creation, becoming a new being, what else do we receive out of this act of obedience to God? The book of Revelation describes the end times. Many people say, hey, we're in the end times right now. Maybe we are, maybe we're not. I'm not one to say. But the thing I do know is if you read the end of the book, we won. So if you're a Christian, you have nothing to worry about. But there's a description of the new heaven in there that is just very beautiful that I want to close this out with today. In this new heaven, we are told, this is Revelation 21, 4 through 5, says, And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death, no sorrow, nor crying. There shall be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. Then he who sat on the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said to me, Write, for these words are truly and faithful. All mature Christians know this life will bring tribulation and trouble, as well as blessings and comfort. We have all shed tears. I've shed many tears for you, Lauren, and I've experienced you shedding many tears yourself. We've all shed tears for a loved one. We've all shared tears at some point in our time. 
I love what Psalms 56 8 says. This is just beautiful. It says, You keep track of all my sorrows. You have collected all my tears in your bottle. You're, you have recorded each one in your book. And we're told right here, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes in this new heaven. Just know this. God knows all of our sorrows that we have gone through. Think about this. He has collected every tear of ours in a bottle. He has tracked everyone in his book. We have all shed many tears before we were saved by Jesus. We will shed many more after we have been saved. But know this, in a new heaven, God will wipe away every tear that we shed. And in the new heaven, the place we have looked forward to, there will be no more pain, no more sorrow, for all of those things will be no more. Jesus says, all of this is possible because I make all things new. Just remember, Jesus loved you even when you hated, despised him and spit in his face. All he wants is for you to take that leap of faith and trust him. Now that you know what is available to you, ask yourself, do you truly know him? Do you have that relationship with him that he so desires? So desires. Is there any doubt at all in your mind? If he is pulling on your heart, if he is knocking on your door, you could say, don't let this be the day you ignore him and say, I'll get to that another day. I'll do that another day. Right now I'm having too much fun. Don't let this be the day you ignore Jesus knocking on your door again. Ask everybody, please stand.